What does it take to be the worst? Luck, talent. Jared Kushner is your top advisor. Donald Trump has all of these and it's helped make him the most scandal ridden president in American history. But which of these scandals is the best of the worst? The Daily Show consulted historians, political scientists and psychoanalysts. And we ignored all of those people and pulled something out of our ass. This is Donald Trump's 100 most tremendous scandals. And we're picking up right where we left off at number 75. This was the largest audience to ever witness an inauguration, period. Alternative facts. Whether they may have had some kind of Russian money funneling through them to help Trump. Tax dollars to travel by private jet. The $43,000 soundproof phone booth and a sweetheart deal on a $50 a month Capitol Hill rental from a lobbyist. $139,000 price tag for new doors. High-end, taxpayer-funded dinners. A $300 million contract. Worked for a place that marketed a masculine toilet for well-endowed men. It's a wonderful line. I own some of it. Go buy it today. Kellyanne, what was my temperament yesterday? In the Very room? calm, no temper tantrum. Purging the government of perceived enemies. Pushed through Jared and Ivanka's security clearance using private email servers. Sweetheart deal to Jeffrey Epstein. Abuse allegations from both of his former wives. The raid has continued to court political controversy, particularly with regards to the death of the Navy SEAL. I said, you gotta clean your floors, you gotta clean your flo forests. Urging his millions of Twitter followers to boycott an American company. I said, please don't be too nice. You shoot migrants in the legs, fortifying a border wall with a water-filled trench stocked with snakes or alligators. And they want more people in their sanctuaries Cities, well, we'll give them more people. We can give them a lot. Crazy Elizabeth Warren, or as I affectionately call her, Pocahontas. Obama wiretapped him in Trump Tower. That came from a Breitbart article that was a total conspiracy theory. I know nothing about QAnon. I just told I you. I know very little. You told me, but what you tell me doesn't necessarily make it fact. Damn, that's exhausting. And you thought you weren't getting anything done at the office. Well, that brings us to tonight's final scandal, Coming in at number 51, it involves Twitter, a Category 5 hurricane, and the worst use of a Sharpie since your college roommate drew a dick. Nature's Fury. In September of 2019, a storm was brewing in the Atlantic. Hurricane Dorian making its way toward the United States. Forecasters expecting it to make a dramatic turn to the north. I'm not sure that I've ever even heard of the Category 5. I knew it existed. The Category 5 is something that uh, I don't know that I've ever even heard the term other than I know it's there. But Hurricane Dorian was nothing compared to the tempest about to blow the roof off the Oval Office. Hurricane Don. The National Weather Service had to scramble to correct misinformation from President Trump about Dorian. President Trump tweeted, in addition to Florida, South Carolina, North Carolina, Georgia, and Alabama will most likely be hit much harder than anticipated. The National Weather Service corrected the president, saying Alabama will not see any impacts from Dorian. Suddenly, America was caught between two claims. But who to believe? Scientists who have dedicated their lives to the study of weather patterns? Or a man who thinks wind is caused by birds flapping too hard? This is a tough hurricane. One of the wettest we've ever seen from the standpoint of water. As the people of Alabama braced for either massive destruction or slightly overcast skies, there was still time to avoid disaster. All President Trump had to say was, sorry, I was wrong. The hurricane is not going to hit Alabama. Alabama's gonna get a piece of it, it looks like. It is a very, very powerful hurricane. A great place, it's called Alabama, and Alabama could even be in for at least some very strong winds and something more than that it could be. That's right. Although the experts tried to make Trump understand, he had already boarded up his ears. Hurricane Dorian had moved on narrowly missing Alabama by 600 miles, but Hurricane Donald was just forming. After seeing an ABC News report on his mistake, Trump gained new strength, tweeting, Such a phony hurricane report by lightweight reporter John Carl of ABC News. It was a direct attack on science, and also on Twitter user Jonathan Carl, who is a Kentucky pastor and not ABC News anchor John Carl, an innocent victim of Hurricane Donald. Over the next 36 hours, Hurricane Donald seemed to die down, but then it returned. This time with a Sharpie. 
In a White House video released Wednesday, Trump displays a modified National Hurricane Center forecast. The graphic appears to have been altered with a Sharpie to indicate a risk the storm would move into Alabama. I know that Alabama was in the original forecast. They actually gave that a 95% chance. That's right. Donald Trump tried to redraw a map with a Sharpie. Have some respect for our intelligence. At least learn Photoshop. But what if the culprit wasn't Trump at all? That map that you showed us today looked like it almost had like a Sharpie. Right? I don't know. I don't know. It was a real mystery. Who could have possibly taken a Sharpie to a hurricane map? It had to be someone with an almost pathological obsession with using the permanent markers, as if they needed their marks to be the boldest, the loudest, the most permanent. But who? There would be no way to know for certain. The storm raged for days, growing in strength until it became a Category 5 tweet storm. Government agencies that most Americans had never even heard of were transformed into hazardous projectiles by the game. Secretary of Commerce Wilbur Ross threatened to fire top employees at NOAA on Friday after the agency's Birmingham office contradicted Trump's claim. What began as one bad tweet had escalated into a full-scale political scandal with not one, not two, but three government investigations. Like a Sharpie drawing a fake path of a hurricane, it's a scandal that simply can't be erased. All because there was a hurricane over a year ago that had a 5 to 20% chance of hitting Alabama, but ultimately didn't. I remember Sharpie Gate very well, although I like to call it Benghazi. That's all the time we have for tonight. Join us next time as we explore the world of porn stars, Little Rocket Man, and five different flavors of racism as we continue to count down Donald Trump's 100 most tremendous scandals.